afternoon. Our provincial affairs reporter Tom Vernon begins our coverage. For the PCs, this is supposed to represent a new beginning, a new premier and a new cabinet. That word new, well, you better get used to hearing it. Our new progressive conservative government represents a fresh start. As far as cabinet shuffles go, this was a pretty big one. Gone entirely are the old finance and health ministers. Doug Horner and Fred Horn are completely out of cabinet. Two unelected members are in. Former Edmonton Mayor Stephen Mandel takes over health, and former Calgary Board of Education Chair Gordon Dirks leads education. I felt it was important to renew, recharge, re-energize uh, the new government, and I reached out specifically to uh, these two people. They're very well respected. On those two appointees in particular, the opposition says Albertans are being underserved. Two most important and biggest portfolios representing 50% of the government spending being held by people who aren't even elected, who don't have a mandate, and who are going to now be distracted for the next couple of months trying to win seats in the, in the by-election campaigns. And whether this has really changed, well, the opposition points out that 13 of the ministers were already in cabinet. I think that if this cabinet were a horse, it's so lame, you'd have to take it out and shoot it. With Mr. Prentice, this is in with the old and out with the progressive. Prentice insists his cabinet will give Albertans a new look government, and that work will begin right away. If you look at the cabinet from top to bottom, I think Albertans will uh, see it as a refreshing change. They'll see new ideas, new energy, and they'll see that uh, effective immediately. Tom Vernon, Global News. So here's how these changes will play out on the floor of the legislature. 11 members from the old cabinet are relegated to the back benches. That includes such high profile names as Thomas Lukasik and Doug Horner. And while the Premier talked about change, there are still a lot of faces from the old cabinet in the new one. 13, in fact, including Jeff Johnson and Jonathan Dennis. They'll be joined in the inner circle by four former backbenchers. And again, cabinet now includes three unelected members, the Premier, and the health and education ministers. These cabinet appointments include two ministers who have yet to be elected, Stephen Mandel, who takes over health, and Gordon Dirks, who takes over education. Now, it's an attempt by Prentice to put a new face on his government, but analysts say it's a risky move. Fletcher Kent explains. They now formally head three of Alberta's biggest ministries, but while Premier Jim Prentice, Health Minister Stephen Mandel, and Education Minister Gordon Dirks now have standing, None has a seat, but Prentice says they are what Alberta needs now. Both of these new ministers are people of achievement. They are exactly the kind of sharp and disciplined minds that we want working on behalf of Albertans. Stephen Mandel served as Edmonton's mayor for three terms. Because I sure not do much. In that time, he was often critical of the provincial government. Gordon Dirks is a former chair of the Calgary Board of Education. In the 80s, he was a cabinet minister in Saskatchewan's Grant Devine-led government, and he's also a pastor in a fundamentalist church. Opposition parties say these two shouldn't be here, at least not now. Stephen Mandel's a good man. But listen, as mayor of Edmonton, he couldn't fix the potholes. How is he going to fix health care? Have the by-elections first. And if they win a seat, by all means, appoint them to your cabinet, but not the other way around. Political analyst Bob Murray isn't surprised with the decision to appoint outsiders. He says Prentice needs to look different than Redford. But politically, Dirks is an interesting choice. He's a social conservative. To me, what that says is that this is aimed directly at the Wild Rose's base of support. So Prentice clearly does not intend to move the party any farther to the left. By-elections have yet to be called, but have been promised for the fall. Bob Murray says there are no safe seats anymore and even one defeat could be a political disaster to Prentice. Are Albertans as a whole in those specific by-election areas really favorable to this type of change? Is a swing to the right really what Prentice wants to start by communicating to the public? A first big test is Premier that comes before Prentice even takes a seat. Fletcher Kent, Global News. Now we'd like to know your thoughts. Is the Premier's new cabinet enough to give the PC party a fresh start? Have your say on our website. You're watching the news hour.